Hi, I'm Emma Boston. I'm an engineering manager at Spotify in Stockholm and welcome to CSS Foundations. My goal with this course was to help beginners in web development gain confidence reading and writing CSS code. In this course, we'll start out by learning the terminology and history of CSS. Then we'll move into more foundational concepts like color and typography. We'll wrap things up with some more advanced topics like media queries and responsive design. And finally, we'll take all of these skills that we've learned and apply them in a project where we'll build a website from start to finish. I hope this course gives you a solid foundation to continue on your journey with CSS. What color is our paragraph text going to be in this example here? So we've got a div class of blue. Inside of that div, there's a paragraph. And our style rule here is class blue equals, not equals, but color blue. So what, what color is our paragraph text going to be? It's still going to be blue. You think it's going to be blue? Indeed, it is going to be blue. If you can see that text has changed to blue, I know that's not the most accessible blue color. Do we know why that's going to be blue? Because it, um, it applies to itself and all of its children, children elements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty close. Yeah. So um, it's due to this concept called inheritance. It automatically yeah. inherits. Mm -hmm. Inheritance. So this occurs when an inheritable property like color is not set directly on the element itself, but the parent chain is going to be traversed up until it finds a value for that property. Mm -hmm. Okay, another one. What happens now? So now we've got two style rules here. We've got paragraph color red. Um, that's the type selector. And then we've got a class selector with color blue. We've got two, it could be two options. So which one do we think? You got a 50% chance. I'll say red. Yeah, the paragraph is, is say red. Is, yeah, enforced now to be in red. Uh huh. Yeah, totally right. So do we know why? Um, I'm assuming because it goes up the inheritance tree until it finds the first match. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't actually need to traverse the tree in this case, right? Because our paragraph has a, a declared style rule. But it would. So if there was no selector that matched that paragraph, it would traverse up and look for, oh, okay, maybe the, the direct parent has a, a color set on there. Okay, last one. So now, again, we've got our two selectors, but any guess what the color now is going to be? Blue. Blue. Yes, absolutely. You want to guess why? Um, it's, the, it's the stronger specifier, I guess mm. I would say. Like, yeah. it, um, Stronger specifier. Yeah, totally true. It has a, a higher specificity. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're going to learn what that means right now, actually. So specificity is that algorithm that our browsers are using to determine what CSS declaration should be applied. So every selector that we write has a calculated weight and it's kind of like a survival of the fittest. The most specific weight wins. It does get a little bit technical. So, you know, you don't need to memorize how this calculation is run. I think the more practice you get, the more easily identifiable these things will become. And it really only matters if you have two selectors that are trying to uh, style the same exact element, that's when this really comes into play. So when we calculate specificity, we use a three column approach here. For every ID selector, we add one to the ID column. For every class selector, we add a one in the class column. And for every type selector, we add a one in the type column. Now the ID column is the most specific, followed by class and then by type. Uh, and to get that specificity value, we're going to add up the values of all of the columns to get the final uh, specificity weight. So let's take an example. So given the specificity calculation rules, we can calculate the specificity of this and we'll do the first ones together. So the first selector is a class selector. So we're selecting all elements with a class of body. So that's going to put a one in the class column. And then we are also targeting the, um, the type selector for paragraphs. So you get a one and the type column. So this is going to give us a specificity of 0, 1, 1. Does anyone want to take a guess what this one might be? So remember, it's ID, class, type. Um, two in the, two for in the class column and then one in the 
selector column? Yeah. Uh, one in the type column. Type, yes. Type column. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, yep, it's going to be zero, two, one. There are no ID selectors. There are two class selectors and one type selector. Yep. Okay, last one. Anyone want to guess what this specificity will be? One, one, zero. One, one, zero. Absolutely, it is. We have one ID and one class. Now, the caveat here inline styles. Inline styles have a higher specificity than the ID selector. And we just said ID is the highest specificity column, right? But inline styles overrule that. So let's take an example. In our CSS, we are styling an element that has an ID of text to be red. But we can see in our HTML here, we've got style equals color blue. Now, because inline styles override IDs, it's going to be blue. Fixed and sticky are two that confuse the living daylights out of me for the longest time. I didn't understand the difference. So I have a couple of videos that will illustrate the difference here. So fixed, when you have an element of position fixed, it is again removed from the document flow. And it's positioned relative to the containing block that's established by the viewport. So what does that mean? So here is a little video. Our red box has a position of fixed. You can see that on line 20 here, and we can go do this in the code pen. And you'll notice as we scroll, it scrolls with the viewport, right? So position fixed. It's going to be fixed. 20 pixels top, it's pushed 20 pixels uh, right and down. But it scrolls with you the entire viewport width, right? When it comes to position sticky, it's very similar. The difference is it's going to stop when its container has reached its end. So if we go back to our code pen, and now instead of fixed, we want it to be sticky. Well, let's code it in real time. We've got our container. Let's give it a height. Let's say height 600 pixels, right? We'll give it a border so we can see where that container lies. Let's say four pixel solid black. I'm also coding live on the fly, so let's see how this goes. I want to be able to wrap these. We'll give it a div with a class of wrapper. I'm using that Emmet notation for uh, for brevity here, so bear with me. Ignore my spacing. So now we've got a div with a class of wrapper. We'll give the wrapper a background color so we can see it. Uh, background. We'll call it light gray. It's the named color. And we will give this a height, let's say, of 400 pixels. OK? So it doesn't take up the entire, the entire uh, container. Now, instead of fixed, you can see fixed, it's going to scroll with the whole thing, regardless of the bounding container here. Let's change this to sticky. If we change this to sticky, it's going to stop when this container is scrolled out of view. Let's to illustrate that. Let's make this 800. So there's a bigger gap, right? It scrolls, it scrolls, it stops, and it scrolls up with the rest of its container. So that's the difference between uh, fixed and sticky. Media queries allow us to apply styles based on device type or other characteristics. So some of the ones that you might see, aspect ratio, device orientation, whether that's landscape or portrait. There's a prefers reduced motion media query. This is fantastic for um, accessibility for users that um, they can't look at things online that have a lot of moving pieces, right? It makes them motion sick. Prefers color scheme if someone um, needs a specific color palette um, to be accessible. And then min width and max width. Um, min width and max width, I always get them confused um, intuitively. They just don't make a lot of sense to me. So I've illustrated this example. So we've got at media, max width 800 pixels. The styles will be applied if the browser viewport is less than or equal to 800 pixels, right? In contrast, min width, 800 pixels, will apply styles if the browser viewport is greater than or equal to 800 pixels. And we don't have to limit ourselves to just one media query. We can use the AND uh, keyword to apply multiple media queries. So let's go back here. We want 
to have a new grid layout when we reach that thousand pixels, right? So to illustrate this concept, let's try this. Let's say max with a thousand pixels. Let's see what that does. Let's just change the body color. Let's see body, background, blue. Let's make it real obvious when we've hit that break point, right? Ah, <laughs> body secondary is overriding it. Specificity issues, right? I'm trying to set a, a style using a type selector, but there's something more specific that's overriding it. So let's just copy that name, right? It's body secondary. Let's try that. Bah. I'll just type it. Body secondary. Well, look at that specificity. This is why it's important, huh? Right. So now when we hit a width on our viewport that is below 1000 pixels, our body is blue. There is an alternative to using max width here. What we could do is say width, width less than 1000 pixels. This is a little easier, at least for me to read personally. Uh, and that also works, right? So obviously, we don't want to change our, our body color to blue here. So let's go ahead. Am I in our, this is in the base file. I'm going to put this back in speakers because it was not a file issue here, right? So what I want to do instead, if I hit this viewport, I don't want two cards per row. It's too crowded. So let's just do one per row. So all we need to do here on our speakers wrapper, where, which is where we've defined our, our grid template columns, Instead of two columns, let's just say it's one. Okay, look at that. So now, anything lower than a thousand pixels, now we've got one column.